All right, hello everyone. Welcome back to my Whalen Command and Core tutorial series. This is part two of the video I uploaded earlier, the basic introduction to setting up uh, Sencom Core. So now we are going to get down into the basics of programming. So first things first, uh, if you're completely new to this, you will want to download uh, the Whalen Command software from whalen.com. Uh, this is what you're going to be utilizing program core and basically any Whalen product. So you can see Weekend, Smart Logic, Sapphire, uh, HHS 3200, 4200, Core, Carbide, uh, and then Candrel Gen 2 and Gen 3. So we're going to select Core from this drop down menu, click Continue, and then you'll be greeted with this page. So one of the things you can do is Quick Start, detect via USB. This will detect uh, all the connected hardware you have. So your brain, control head, any output or remote expansion modules, uh, light bars, inner edges, traffic advisors, external sirens, all this good stuff here will be automatically detected by this and given it an installation ID. So once you do that, um, you can either do that or manually select what you have. Uh, because sometimes you might be bench building this, so you may not have all those devices hooked up to power and whatnot. So we'll go in here and we'll select our control head. So when you select your control head, you'll notice there is a plethora of options here. Now, Suncom Core utilizes Weekend X, which is Whalen's latest iteration of Weekend. So you'll notice that those that are compatible with that are labeled WCX, WCX, and WCX. Now, the main difference is that these control heads can actually have flash patterns assigned to them and do uh, the dynamic variable intensity patterns. Uh, these control heads here that are not uh, we can X control heads cannot do that. So we'll select 21 slide we can X and we're not gonna select anything else. This is just gonna be a very basic build. Over here you have your presets. You can edit what presets you want, so this will automatically assign uh, buttons and whatnot and certain inputs to different things that you can do, so you can automatically assign these if you want to. If you don't, you can leave it as default or just unselect all of them. So we'll leave these as the default ones they give you. Press continue, and you will be greeted by this screen. Uh, one thing that Whalen has done excellently is the UI of command is very nice, uh, very aesthetically pleasing and kind of simple to go through. Uh, so here we're greeted with a actual picture of our control head that you can interact with, um, select all the buttons and whatnot. So we're going to start out with programming stuff. So we're going to make this very easy. Um, so slide one, let's go in into here so you'll when you go into outputs you'll be greeted by this screen high current low current and 21 slide we can x this the 21 slide we can x is actually the backlights for your buttons so when you turn action turn on that will turn on the red backlight the backlight itself is the blue the red is the um, one that would typically come on when you turn it on so you know switch nine when it's on it'll turn on the red backlight for switch nine so on and so forth so we're gonna go and start by doing slide one so we're going to start out by creating what we have up front first we'll go through we'll name all of our outputs first so this will be driver side red ion and then select that and change the color to red driver side white ion Again, that's the nice thing about uh, Sencom Core and Command is that you can individually uh, do this. I don't care. <laughs> um, and also, you have split colors available. So blue. I know in my previous video the ions pictured were red blue duos, but we'll just imagine they're red white blue white. So we'll continue naming everything. So I'm going to leave this up on the screen while I do this, just so that you get an idea of what I'm doing. So we'll have J 
just kind of see the process that it is. And this is one of the first things you should do after you plan your build is name your output so that you already have an idea of what's going to be going on so that you're not too confused. And another nice thing is that even after you rename these, you can hover over the name and it'll tell you the actual output name. So the first one's J10-1 and it's two and a half amps. So it's ready for two and a half amp current. And it'll also tell you the wire color as well. And you can see it goes through all these and it'll tell you all that. I know this is a little bit boring to watch, but I want to make sure that everybody kind of understands because sometimes when you skip around, people you know, don't understand or might miss something. So I like keeping this on the screen while I do it so that people don't get confused and I don't have to go back and make another video about it. So as you can see here, we're moving on to the driver and passenger side ions that we laid out. And again, I'm going through this as if they're duo color. So Typing is probably getting annoying, but we're almost finished. As you can see, we're also almost out of low current output. So these two will be our final low current outputs. Now you still have your high current outputs that you can use, but when that's one of the things about pre-planning is that you gotta make sure that for what you're doing, you have enough outputs for what you wanna do or for what the customer wants. If not, you're going to have to utilize a uh, output expansion module. As you can see, we still have um, six high current outputs. Now, J11-1 is a relay. This cannot be flash. It simply turns on and off. You cannot use this as a flashing output. So just remember that. And this is rated for, I think, 10 amps and then um, you have two high current outputs which are ready for 15 and four more that are 10 amp. So now that we have that set up, um, so there's a couple different things you can do. You'll notice events and virtual inputs. So events is basically based upon when, it's a programming language, honestly. Um, it's based upon and, if, or, uh, or. So it's basically stating, it's creating a little program within itself saying that when so and so device is in this state on all for you know if you have multi-state buttons um, and or one of these is turned on then this event will happen so we'll go through that uh, a little bit but we'll start out with slide one so we'll say slide one will activate um, our driver and passenger side red ions turn on and we'll do a single flash 75 so just on and off and we'll alternate them so how you can do this is you can set them to do either oh, where is it can have these alternate back and forth so can have one set to zero and another set to 180 and this will phase them back and forth so 0 180 will have these alternate between each other so we have the red on the back flashing on level one now this is where events come in say you want to have a park mode event so this one's in drive and then this one will be in park mode and again you can do this to ensure you know, when it's in drive, it's in one mode. When it's in park mode, it's in another mode. But we'll do event name slide switch one 
pork. So one, you'll see what I mean. So when slide switch one is is on, we'll add in another. And virtual inputs or ACM inputs. Uh, this would be different if you are utilizing a um, OBD plug. So pork kill is on. This will say that these two will switch to a different pattern. And we'll say that that pattern is it's going to DVI. I really like DVI. It will be single flash 75 day. We'll set them to the same phase. So now when it's in pork mode, it's in single flash 75 uh, DVI. So that's that dynamic variable intensity. And this is the daytime power. As you see, there's night and day. So daytime is full power, nighttime is a lower power. So now we'll go into slide, slide switch two. So that will probably turn on uh, driver side red, passenger side blue, uh, driver side red, passenger side blue, driver side red, passenger side blue, driver side red, passenger side blue. And we'll set these all to, let's say, mm, double flash 90. So now this is where this comes in. You can go in and we'll say that. So another thing to know about phasing is that 180 will flash before zero. So when you want to set, so we'll set all these up. So we'll set the red up to flash first. Sorry, I got a little bit confused there for some reason. So you'll see, we'll go in and out. Sometimes this gets a little bit messed up when you're previewing it on your computer. Um, that's no big deal. Just ensure that it is correct in person. As you can see, I don't know why this is kind of off, but it is. That's mostly because of how many are being flashed at the same time. As you can see, it's synced up now. So we can do that. And then again, if we want to make another event, we can copy this event. And I forget how you paste it. We'll say slide switch to park. All right. So what we'll do is we'll paste that event in there. Oh. Apparently we will not. Actually it will, but you have changed the event conditions. Again, sorry about that. It can be a little bit confusing even for somebody who uses it a lot. So again, ACM inputs, park kill is on. And we'll just kind of go, you can red, blue. And again, we'll put this to a single flash 75 day pattern. And again, we'll set the red to do our 180 phase. And what we're going to do here is we're going to, instead of this flashing red, we're going to have this flash red, uh, flash blue. So then once again, we'll get our nice DVI patterns. And so now we'll go into slide switch three. And this is going to be a little bit different. So we're going to set these to um, my favorite pattern. Where is it? Ultra. I love ultra scan. So ultra one. So we can do that. You can set that to ultra one, and you'll see this will all flash together. And we can set our white to ultra one as well. And you'll think, oh, what are you doing? Phase it. We can set this to 
Ultra 4. Now, let's watch. And so now we have all of our patterns set up here. As you can see, we turn this on, you know, flash, and you want to just make sure, test you on the vehicle, make sure that everything's okay, because this view can kind of be a little bit um, too much and really doesn't get the point across of what you're seeing. That's the one thing I like about Sound Off Blueprint is that you have the ability when the system's connected to the computer to actually test the system on the vehicle itself and all the lights uh, through the software. You just click a button and it will actually um, do whatever you have selected to do on the vehicle itself so that you don't have transfer the file over and then um, actually manually set it up. But this is how you set up a very basic program in Wayland Sencom Core. So if you have any more questions upon this, especially upon events, virtual inputs, um, for virtual inputs, Go check out my Argus video that kind of gives a quick little overview of virtual inputs and how they're utilized um, along with events too. So go check those out and as always if you have any more questions shoot me a message, leave a comment and also check out the command software group on Facebook. It's a great resource with um, plenty of people who have tons of experience from Sapphire to Cantrol to Carbide to Core. Um, and also, there's a Wayland liaison in there as well who can kind of give you a better idea and also give your feedback directly to uh, Wayland's engineering team as well. And they'll kind of give an idea of what's being fixed uh, if you have any issues too. So again, have a great day and thank you for watching.